Hello, I'm Barkley Robinson, the new winemaker here at Road 13. And uh, although you members of the Half Cork Marathon can't be here today, we'd like to give you part of the experience uh, that we're offering here at Road 13. So I'm standing here in the Castle Vineyard here at Road 13 with our senior viticulturist, Rob A. Church, uh, to talk a little bit about viticulture. So I'll hand it over to you, Rob. Hi everyone, as Barclay said, I'm a senior viticulturist here for Road 13. And uh, currently we're in our second year of organic conversion. So uh, vintage 2021. So hopefully when we can invite you all back on site, uh, we'll have some certified organic fruit, uh, which is a pretty exciting spot to be in. Absolutely. So as we're all about the dirt here at Road 13, the organic viticulture is about taking care of that dirt and stewarding the dirt. As Barclay mentioned, we're, we're really committed to increasing our soil health and therefore our vine health. And we're really committed to using uh, things such as compost and worm castings in our homemade compost program to really uh, encourage the vineyard to be self-sustaining and increase our soil biodiversity. That'll really drive vine health, which in turn will drive fruit health and wine quality. We're pouring the 2018 Jackpot Chardonnay. So this is our, uh, our flagship barrel fermented Chardonnay from the estate vineyard here. Uh, so Rob will talk to the vineyard a little bit. 100% estate fruit uh, from the Road 13 estate here on the Golden Mile. Uh, a stellar example of what premium Chardonnay can be off the Golden Mile. Uh, there's some really key aspects to this site that really help to make this wine what it is. One of those is the soil. It's extremely rock, rock driven, lots of minerals, lots of carbonates in the soil, which then get taken up by the vines and inferred into the fruit and into the wine. And you really get that, that minerality and that, that, uh, that acidity that comes through that really balances out the, the fruit component of the Chardonnay and really helps the oak support such a rich Chardonnay. Definitely, it's an extremely well oak integrated wine. So it's definitely uh, there as a contributor, not an overpowering component. There's definitely a harmony for sure, yeah. yeah. Good balance. Come by and try it. At our previous station, we were talking with Rob about our organic viticulture and how we care for the dirt. Because uh, at Road 13, we're all about the dirt, so we learned about how we care for the dirt with organic viticulture. Here we are with our soil scientist, Stephanie, and we're going to get the dirt on the dirt and actually learn about the dirt. So let's, uh, let's talk dirt. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so this was sort of, again, all about the dirt. We wanted a way to visually show that. And it's one thing to say Road 13 has stemwinder soil and they have a wine named after it, but nobody really knows what a stemwinder soil is, or at least if you haven't been in a lot of soil pits. So we take these, these are called soil monoliths, and we dig a big soil pit with an excavator and we put this sort of cookie cutter frame into the face of the pit and kind of dig out from behind it and fold it on top and then we mount it on these boards and I kind of pick away at it until it looks really representative and it's this great visual example of what's under our feet. Um, so this one, these two right here, these are really characteristic of the Golden Mile Bench and of the Road 13 property. These three were taken on Road 13. I brought this one along just for a comparison's sake. This one was from a Soyuz down by the border. We have a vineyard down there. So you can see this one is sand to depth. And this is very typical for a Soyuz and also Black Sage Bench. It's very, very yes. sandy right yeah. across the valley. Um, these soils here, you can see they're really stony, really rubbly, a lot of angular fragments. And this is what's characteristic about uh, Road 13 and the Golden Mile Bench. And this is kind of what's created it as a sub appellation is sort of a growing region within a growing region. And you can see this one, the stem winder has gravel all the way to the surface. And when you're thinking about establishing a vineyard, not only is it really hard to put a post in soil like this, but it's also difficult. It's a little bit of a challenging environment for young plants. Um, in sand, the vine roots don't really have any boundaries. They can kind of explore. There's nothing limiting them. Here, a lot of times it is sort of, they have a distinct path they follow, or they kind of have to crawl around a stone or a cobble before they can move on. Um, and it creates this own sort of uh, challenging soil, a challenging environment, which is very, very 
Uh, it kind of it imparts characteristics on the plant itself and on the rooting structure as well as the grapes that, that grow on it. And you can really see how, like these two especially, you can almost picture how that would have sloughed off Mount Kobo right behind the exactly. winery here and just come down and really created this whole bench that the Golden Mile is all a part of. So these two are very unique to what we call alluvial fans. And the way that those are created is during glacial times, there's a lot of meltwater that kind of backs up into the different creeks on this side. So Testalinden and Tinhorn and Hester, those basins hold a lot of different shapes of stones and sand and silt material, kind of everything that's up in the mountains. And then there's usually this really big debris flow where this event where it, the canyons kind of deposit all this material in these little triangles. And that's why they're called alluvial fans, is they create little triangles at the base of these creeks. And that's what's characteristic. Exactly, they're really, really great for vineyards because they have that gentle slope from the base of the mountain kind of facing down to the river and it, it kind of facilitates that cold air drainage. It's really, really great for vineyards. So a lot of vineyards are planted on these alluvial fans. And the really cool thing about this uh, the stem winder and the, the ratnip soil is it really has this deposit that, and this is where we, we have our, our Chenin Blanc and our Chardonnay vineyards are typically on this soil. So let's exactly. talk about that uh, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I have a little better example here. Um, so this, these kind of coatings on the rock is carbonate. So it's calcium carbonate that has precipitated on the bottom of the rock. And it's really interesting because it always occurs on the base of the rock. So you know that this one was in the soil like this. So it always is on the bottom and it's, I'm not sure why, but I've noticed a lot of these soil pits have a high root density around where this occurs. So starting around here and I'm thinking maybe it's water driven because this would have to be evaporated out of water. So it's sort of like the roots just explore and hang out wherever we see this. It's, it's really cool. And in the Chenin Blanc and the Chardonnay from these vineyards, we, we tend to find a really nice acidity and, and mouthfeel from those those particular vineyards because that, that limestone, that lime deposit, that ca calcium carbonate really gives a nice uh, mid palate weight to the, those varieties. So. It is, yeah. And it's a little bit different in places like Ontario. They have a parent material, their bedrock is carbonated. Here it's not. So this sort of anomaly is really interesting to find. So the wine we're pouring here is the 2016 Sparkling Syrah. So uh, a very unique wine, not only to the area, but also to Road 13. This is the first time we did a spark traditionally made, uh, sorry, traditional method sparkling red wine. Uh, so this is a Syrah made in the traditional method. So sparkling red wine, typically you're going to find sparkling Syrah in Australia. Uh, Basically a lot of warm places that grow Syrah would have a sparkling Syrah program because you have very warm summers, so you want the red wine, but you also want something cool, so it works really well with barbecue. Uh, and traditionally in Australia, it was a, a meat sandwich that had a bit of a really nice pickle slaw uh, on top to really bring a nice uh, bite of acidity. And so, so you have all the elements of red wine, but with that cool and the effervescence, so it really works well with a lot of that summer fare and the summer barbecue. So very limited production here at, uh, at uh, Road 13. We only made 300 cases. Uh, so come by quick if you want to, uh, to try it and uh, take advantage of it. We look forward to seeing you here at Road 13 uh, the next time you're in the Okanagan Valley. Uh, if you can't visit, visit us in person, then visit us online at www.road13vineyards.com.